deterministic policies, which may, on the surface, at least, totally you know, uncivilized, such as uh, torture, such as uh, arrest people without due process, such as uh, a very harsh treatment of dissidents. And so the human rights uh, community would consider that as violation of uh, the basic rights of every human being. So if even one act is done in that idea, that all human beings uh, suffer. And so we do have this uh, uh, very complicated issue involved. But first, the Confucian response is to emphasize, first of all, the importance of uh, compassion, or the importance of sympathy. In the liberal discourse, compassion and sympathy, these are relegated to the background as somewhat irrelevant to the political process. Uh, you may uh, develop uh, these kind of ideas um, uh, later. And this also a great deal of emphasis on civility and harmony of society. And if the society is totally conflictual, in other words, the society is based upon a certain adversarial uh, conflict. If the security of the society is being undermined by tension and conflict, for example, tension and conflict eventually will erupt and will lead to um, sometimes war, of course, often unresolvable conflicts and tension. So social harmony is uh, extremely important. But on the other hand, the uh, commitment to the dignity of the individual, to the importance of the individual to uh, develop both a self-understanding and self-identity that is uh, not at all uh, undermined by social, uh, social coercion. This, of course, in the idealized sense. You know, you talked about a human being learns for the sake of the self. And it's, uh, in this sense, uh, rather like uh, the Kantian idea that the will of the person, the voluntary will of the person, uh, should, should never be undermined. And uh, morality, in the best sense of the term, ought to be autonomous morality. So, the dignity of the individual has to be preserved. So how do you deal with the question about uh, relativism? How do you deal with the, per, uh, with the principle that uh, uh, no matter what, the specific conditions of, the, of uh, human beings will have to be understood in a broader sense of commonality or shareability? Uh, shareability. One way out of the situation from the Confucian point of view is to put a lot of emphasis on the responsibility of the elite. In other words, to try to develop functional equivalent of rights or claims of people who do not have rights by insisting upon the responsibility of the elite. How do you deal with the people that are homeless, the property stricken. How you argue for the livelihood of uh, people and the assumption if uh, people are poor, or people are homeless, the dignity of these people is rest upon their ability to survive. Uh, you cannot impose un any other morality, rules, and ideas on these people because they have no way of uh, cultivating themselves to be fully developed human beings. Now, the, uh, uh, the liberal critique, as you know, that uh, people who are homeless or property stricken may be led by forces uh, of the market. Maybe they are not motivated to work hard. Maybe their luck is not good enough. But if we become concerned about the luck of every human being, the, dyna the dynamism of the, um, 
the market uh, development would be greatly undermined. Now, the Confucian argument is that if those who are more powerful, more influential, have more uh, access to resources and ideas, are obligated to see the welfare of the society as whole well without undermining their own identity as a fully fresh and a fully flourishing human being. The practices normally sometimes considered as excesses of liberal thinking, especially the market, power of the market, will have to be controlled. And the mechanism of that controlling is based upon not only moral persuasion, but based on some agreed um, you know, legal, legal idea or legal constraint. You can set a limit, limit according to this line of thinking, to the uh, income of um, CEOs. You can set a limit to the runaway you know, market situation. In other words, the government, we say the uh, moral politics of the government, the government is not only an agency for security and function in a very limited way. The government ought to be deeply involved in the well-being of the society at all levels. So a strong government, uh, this, a strong government is not necessarily a negative feature, except you know, the the uh, the commitment is that a strong government will have to be manned, will, will have to be organized by people who are responsible, and the responsibility is considered as an important feature of the development of a functional equivalent of human rights. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so. But how do we know that the government, if it's so deeply involved, that it's going to make the right decisions? I mean, didn't we say in the beginning, do not do unto others as you would not have done unto yourself? So like, how, right. how do you know this involvement? Even though it might be compassionate, how do you know it will benefit? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it depend, uh, depends upon this uh, merging of uh, democracy on the one hand and meritocracy on the other. Mm -hmm. So the leaders of the government will have to go through a very vigorous process of selection. And they, you know, Japan has practiced this for some time, even though the economic situation is pretty terrible now. In other words, uh, meritocracy is based upon not only self-discipline, based upon sheer uh, communal critical self-awareness of the bureaucratic uh, process. And of course, you can say one of the problems with Japan is precisely this bureaucratization, and this bureaucratization is not congenial to the idea of uh, compassion, or to the idea of uh, a kind of biological relationship between the elite on one hand and the populace on the other. So you are not able to, uh, to do that. In other words, all these choices have uh, negative features, and you have to wait how these choices uh, work out according to the country situation. But I think this uh, response to the question you raised, do not do unto others what you would not want others to do unto you, this is a very general principle. The general principle is a principle of reciprocity. And that reciprocity is rested upon a thick description of concrete human relationships. And these concrete human relationships have to be all governed by the spirit of reciprocity, of interaction. Now, responsibility of the elite presupposes the ability of the people in general to make claims. Right now, we don't have a way of making claims on those people who are extremely successful in terms of uh, you know, their work in the market. We, we have no way of uh, arguing against that position. And uh, if you focus on responsibility, then people can make claims. In other words, it's a curious combination, I'm not sure it works very well, of the first generation and second generation of human rights. 
The first